Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Today's tutorial, I want to uh, create a lighthouse in Cinema 4D. And the type or the style of lighthouse that I want to focus on are these um, cone shape uh, type of lighthouses. And they all have very similar elements. Uh, I'm not going to zoom in or open up any additional pictures, but they usually have a tower, uh, a, uh, a platform at the top so that the lighthouse keeper can walk around, look out. And they have a railing of some sort. They have a door that goes into um, the housing at the top where the light is contained. and the, those are the uh, typical elements that these lighthouses possess. And they also possess a spiraling staircase that goes from the bottom entrance all the way up to the top. So today's tutorial is I'm not going to focus on recreating a, um, a lighthouse of a particular type. Instead, I'm going to create just a very basic lighthouse, but I want to focus on creating most of the characteristic elements that these type of lighthouses contain. So, I'm going to start off, come over here and create a primitive cylinder. Let me zoom in. I'm not going to change its proportions at all. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, I must uh, say that if you are going to create a lighthouse like this, probably the first thing you want to do is to import into your scene before you start changing anything on your cylinder. You want to import into your scene, say, a poser figure something uh, a, a human character that is to scale because that will help you in knowing how many subdivisions to make on your um, lighthouse as well as how high to make doors how high to make windows uh, the steps uh, all the basic elements that are going to go into the lighthouse they're going to need to be to human scale and if you just import one of the low resolution poser characters that right there is a tremendous help and will keep you from having to make a whole bunch of changes later on I'm not going to do it in this because I'm not necessarily focusing on scale but rather the elements that lighthouses of this nature typically possess so with my cylinder here I'm going to I'm just going to create say to make this tutorial quicker and, and easier I'm just going to create 30 div subdivisions now if I had a scaled human figure here say this was his head, feet, and legs, then I know, well, this will be about the right height for a step. If, on the other hand, the, the human figure that I created or imported, his head was, say, to here, well, I'm going to need to create a lot more uh, horizontal subdivisions in my cylinder here because right now the steps which is what all these subdivisions will ultimately be these steps are well above his waist and that would not really be to scale so uh, that just illustrates the importance of in initially starting off with a scaled figure here to help you uh, get the proportions down but like I said to make this simpler I'm just going to create 30 height segments I'm going to come over here to caps and all caps are are these top and bottom pieces do I want caps yes but I'm going to add one segment 
which creates that inner uh, subdivision. And that's it. I'm not going to fool with the proportions. I'm going to click on my Make Editable button. Come over here to select polygons, and I want my Live Selection tool. I'm just going to select all of those top polygons, right click, and this ran off my screen. You can't see it, but I'm going to click on Split. I'm going to hit Delete because I'm going to delete the original polygons from the cylinder that is currently selected. And now I have this piece, which is called Top. And I'm going to hide this piece for now. Come back to this original piece. And I'm going to hold down my Control button and drag my cylinder till I get that horizontal line that now appears. And that creates a quick copy for me. I'll call this out, uh, Inner Wall. And I will hide that. This will be my outer wall. OK. Now it's time to start making some stairs. I'm going to, with my Live Selection tool, grab my Select Polygons. Now what I want to do is reduce the size of my selection cursor so I can target individual polygons a little bit easier. And now I'm just going to create a stepping stone, a stair pattern. Not create, but make a selection like what I'm doing here. And to add to my selection, I'm just holding down the Shift key. Rotating around. And uh, in Cinema 4D, it's uh, very similar to hexagon. If I want to rotate around, I can just hold down my Alt key and uh, drag my cursor across with my left mouse button. OK, making sure now that I have a stair pattern selected, and I don't have any wrong ones. OK, that's good. I'm going to, up at the top here, select, um, oh, that's, I'll just do four additional ones at the top. Now I'll hold down Shift, increase the size of my live selection cursor, so I can select all of these a little bit quicker. Hold down my Control key to deselect those and to deselect those. Now the way I am increasing and decreasing the size of my selection tool is I am uh, holding down the left mouse button and then I am using the scroll wheel on my mouse to increase and decrease it. Worked very efficiently that way. OK. I have my stairs selected. I'm going to come up here to Selection, come down here to Set Selection. And what that does is it creates a polygon selection tag. Now, if, say I go through uh, continue modeling this and I do another 30 or 40 or 50 things to it, if I want to come back, and recall that original selection of polygons that I made. All I have to do is double click on this selection tag and there is my original selection of polygons that I made. Okay, so I'm going to come a right click and come down here to split. Again, that's off the screen, you can't see it. I'm going to select split. And what that does is it gives me a separate object here. It gives me the profile or all the polygons that I selected and all the original ones still on my outer wall. So I will call this stairs. Okay, now let me... I'm going to come to my outer wall here. Where is the bottom of my stairs? Here's the bottom of my stairs. Come to my outer wall. Select, oh, I guess I'll select those polygons right there. Let me 
hide my stairs. Oh, I think that was them. Let me delete those. Come back to my stairs. There we are. Now we can see the polygons of my stairs. Well, now notice when we subdivided or split the selection of polygons from the outer wall and it created the new object stairs, uh, it also carried with it the original polygon selection tag. So I can easily recall them that way uh, if I choose to. So I've got my door down at the bottom, all my polygons selected. I'm going to right click, come down here to extrude, and I'm just going to drag inwards or to the left of my screen. And let me look at my hole here through the doorway. Okay, well, obviously this is not to scale because the door is not really tall enough for stairs of this size and the door is probably not wide enough either which again illustrates the necessity to import a scaled figure but this is just demonstrating how to create the basic elements that this type of model possesses so there we go we got a nice staircase now over here in options and tools we have create caps if I hide my outer wall you see that since we extruded inward we have no outer wall. If you want an outer wall click on create caps. Oh, wait a minute I'm doing something wrong here. Let me see create caps. Okay maybe it's not going to. Um, you don't need to create caps because you have an outer wall here that's covering it up. Let me undo that, uh, the, uh, the selection, the, my bevel selection. Let me click off of my selection tag. Live selection, polygons. Actually, I'll delete the selection tag. And let me extrude inwards. Hide my outer wall. Let's see what happens if I create caps. It's still not doing it. Okay, then. Fine, we don't need them anyway. Okay, well, we've got our stairs now. We've got our outer wall. Let's come back to the inner wall here. Now that is of the same proportions as the outer wall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press down on my middle mouse button, which is a mouse wheel, and that gives me a four screen layout. I want to come over here to a top screen layout, uh, 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 top view. I'm going to hide my outer wall. Now with my inner wall, I'm going to come here to scale. And I'm going to scale it down until it covers up just the corner or the edge of the inside of my stairs. If I make it too small, then you'll see that the stairs do not meet flush with the inner wall. So I'm just going to do it, make it just a little bit larger than it needs to be so that it covers up the inside of my stairs. And that's that. So let's come back to a perspective view. And again, I did that by pressing my middle mouse button. Okay, well, because we scaled it down, we see that it's not tall enough. So, um, because I did not alter any of the dimensions of my original cylinder, I know that a primitive cylinder in its unaltered state here in Cinema 4D is 200 uh, measuring units high. So I'm going to come down here to coordinates in my Y axis. I'm going to type in 200 and now it's the size that it needs to be and the stairs meet flush with it. Yes, they actually do intrude a little bit on the inside but uh, you'd never see it. Okay, let's enable the outer wall and now let's come to this top piece here. I'm going to come up here to display, come down here to x-ray. Now I can see through, or if I choose the outer wall, I can see through the object just like a, an x-ray. But I'm going to come up here to the top piece. 
uh, live selection tool. I'm going to select some polygons. Now you can see where the stairs come up and then we have this flat landing um, uh, hallway, a very short little hallway piece. I'm going to, I don't want to select this one. I'm going to select this one and just select backwards from it because you need to have a hole here so the person climbing up can, well, climb through it. And I think that's good to start with. Let's delete that. And let's have a look at... I think that's that's good enough. Let me now select these. I'm going to come to a top view. Scale. And I'm going to scale this out here. So that it just is the same dimension as my inner wall. There we go. Let me click off, uh, deselect the x-ray view. And there we go. We've got a spiral staircase going all the way up. And our not-to-scale primitive doorway. And that is it for this tutorial. In the second one, we will create uh, a landing up here and the top piece that, hou that houses the lighting element. I guess for this top piece, what I can do before we finish up is make sure I'm on live selection, select polygons, control A, right click, extrude, and we will extrude downwards a little bit to create some thickness. Click on Create Caps, click off, and there we've got a, uh, a solid uh, platform up here. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.